Hey y'all, Snarky J Cosplay here, and this is my review of Tampa Bay Comic Con 2022. So, as y'all can see, I'm back home from TBCC, which was exhausting. Now, I only attended TBCC on Saturday. I honestly just wanted to create some content, go out and enjoy the day, and most of all, debut my Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman cosplay, which was a hit. So, I started my day quite literally wrestling my way into that cosplay, which you guys would not believe how impossible it is to get in and out of. That could be a video on its own, really, so I'm not even gonna stress the details. But once I had gotten into it, I headed over to the con at about 11. I thought I was real smart because figuring that parking was going to be a nightmare, I Ubered there and I thought, I'm not even going to have to be outside. I'm not going to have to deal with parking. I'm not even going to have to walk outside. And boy, was I wrong. Upon arrival, I found out that the line to pick up badges was actually outside of the convention center due to some kind of construction they had going on. So on top of wearing head to toe PVC and fake leather, I had to stay stand outside in the Florida heat during a heat wave to get my badge. And the line that they had, even though it moved pretty quick, ended up winding underneath this overpass by the convention center. So for a solid three to five minutes, me and a bunch of other nerds were standing under this overpass, just inhaling car exhaust fumes, which was kind of awful and honestly really unsafe. Luckily though, like I said, the line was moving pretty quick and I managed to get to the convention center through through the line without passing out or dying. Only when I got to the end of the line that let me into the convention center, there was more line to be found on the inside, which was honestly a nightmare. I'd actually never stood in line that long to get my badge for the day. I'm sure folks with experience at bigger conventions probably have, but I've never done this, especially not for TBCC. Last year I went and it was basically a ghost town and there was no line to be found anywhere. So this was honestly a shock. I was just happy that the rest of my day wouldn't take place in the sweltering heat of Florida anymore. Or so I thought. The moment I stepped into the vendor hall of TBCC, two things happened to me that foreshadowed the way the rest of my day was set to go. The first thing was that I was hit with basically warm air. Apparently there was hardly any air conditioning going on within the vendor hall. So there were some pockets of cooler air, probably under air vents and where there weren't as many people. But for the most part, it was actually super warm and kind of humid within the convention center all day. It was awful. I'd never been that hot and uncomfortable at a convention. I had vendors that were dressed in t-shirts and jeans asking me how I wasn't dying in that suit. Bold of them to assume I wasn't dying. I was actively dying. I was just trying to be brave. Now, the second thing that happened to me, I was immediately stopped for a photo in which the guy that was asking for the picture suggested that I put the whip around his neck to make his wife jealous. I did it because I'm not one to disappoint, but it was still super weird. And I basically ended up spending my entire day getting swarmed for pictures. I could not take five steps without having somebody ask me for a photo. And those two things, since they happened the minute I walked in there, were basically my cues for what the rest of the day looked like. The one thing I really wanted to do at TBCC this year was meet James O'Barr. He is the author, the creator, and the original artist for The Crow. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I've linked my video on The Crow in the description below. That's one of the works of fiction that has been most most inspiring and most meaningful to me my whole life. So I always wanted to meet him. Finally, he was gonna be at TBCC. I headed to his table first in the day because I really wanted to have him sign my book. I did succeed in meeting him. It just wasn't exactly the experience I thought it was gonna be. I really wanted to tell him a little bit about how much of an impact his work had had on my life. He didn't really seem all that interested in having that conversation. So I basically gave him this art I made that he barely looked at. He signed my book and I was on my way. So once I'd gotten my big to do out of the way, I basically spent the rest of the morning sort of walking the hall and just exploring. TBCC definitely had some great booths this year. They had really neat stuff in Artist Alley, which was smaller than I anticipated, but they also had some fantastic booths selling everything from food and treats to action figures, comics, plushes, collectibles, and more. As I 
mentioned earlier, I was also taking non-stop pictures and as somebody who's kind of a ham about that kind of thing, that was really what I wanted to do. I was taking photos literally all day and it was crazy. I honestly didn't expect that many people to like my Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman cosplay that much, but I was really glad that they did. So I started getting a little bit snacky around lunchtime and I decided maybe I'll give this convention center's food a try. Yeah. No, everything looked like it was made of rubber. The line was super long. Nobody looked all that excited about what they were eating. And on top of that, there wasn't really that many options to sit. So I decided to forego lunch, which was probably the best move if I'm honest, because I was wearing head to toe PVC and a corset that I could hardly breathe in. So I'm actually currently sitting, taking a break because I think it's literally 75 degrees in the convention center, which is pretty awful. I know that it's hot in these things, but I've actually worn this kind of thing and been cold in the right convention center. I don't know what they've done with the AC here, but it's kind of a nightmare. Honestly, I just needed to escape the vendor hall because of how freaking hot it is in there. So right now, just kind of chugging a water and taking a break from the con. After my break, I decided to go back in and check out the celebrities. They'd had a lot of cancellations this year. The biggest one for me was Paul Bettany, the actor who portrays Vision in the MCU. I really wanted to see him in person and maybe meet him, but he canceled almost last minute, as did a bunch of other people for Tampa Bay Comic Con this year, which wasn't a shocker, but was really disappointing. So the celebrity aisle, honestly, this year for me, didn't really attract me that much. They had a lot of really talented people though, one of which was actually James Murray, otherwise known as Murr from Impractical Jokers. I've been a huge fan of the Jokers for the past like nine years and I was dying to meet him. Only I got in line and basically got kicked out because I told them I only wanted to say hi. I've done that at plenty of conventions where I get in line just to give the actor a gift or just to talk to them for a moment. Most conventions are fine with that, but at Tampa Bay Comic Con, you get rudely pushed away and told if you're not spending any money, you have nothing to talk to this person about. So that was interesting. Now, again, honestly, I can't really say that walking the vendor hall was all that enjoyable to me. There was barely any AC. It was miserable. Like I said, there were people in jeans and t-shirts that were complaining about the temperature in there. I don't know how the Tampa Convention Center decides to put on events with AC that minimal in the middle of a heat wave. It was honestly unbelievable. I'm kind of a trooper though, and because I had already wrestled my way into that cosplay, I knew that I had to keep walking around, and I was honestly having a really good time just taking pictures, looking around at all the merch, and talking to different people about the cosplay when they asked. It was a good time because honestly, adults that I knew had probably seen and enjoyed the 1992 Batman movie, and also little kids who just recognized me as Catwoman. Everybody was really enthused about the cosplay, which made me feel really, really great. And it just was one of those moments where I felt really proud to be part of the community. So as uncomfortable as I was, I insisted on walking the entire vendor hall quite a few times and just talking to as many people as I could, interacting. It was a great time in that regard. But there's only so much walking around I could do. I honestly was really bored at TBCC besides that. I thought their panel programming was really lacking, especially on Saturday. Murr and a lot of the other folks whose panels I wanted to see, they were doing them on Friday and Sunday. I thought Saturday was the most lacking day on the schedule and since that was the only day that I was there, I honestly missed out on a lot of stuff that I would have enjoyed seeing. Because because the programming was lacking to me and I was really tired of just walking around in circles and big crowds, I ended up leaving after about four or five hours. And even though that might not seem that long for a convention day, I was exhausted. I was in five and a half inch heels, full PVC, a corset, a cowl that was squeezing my brain. I was dead tired. So that was about it for me. After those four to five hours, I was done. I didn't have any panels I wanted to do. I was tired of walking around in circles. It was way too hot in that convention center. And I was also hungry because I was not about to spend almost 20 bucks on chicken fingers and fries from a convention center kitchen. So can I say I had a bad time at TBCC? Not at all. I had a really killer time wearing out probably one of my new favorite cosplays. And it was even more fun getting to share that experience with so many like-minded fans
fans and even some of my followers that I met up with there. It was honestly a fantastic experience from that regard. But I can't say that the TBCC organizers really had anything to do with that. That fun, that great experience was based entirely just on the beautiful, kind-hearted folks that showed up and on myself willing to struggle long enough to take pictures and talk to people. There really wasn't all that much to do. The convention center floor lacked organization and the convention center lacked air conditioning and that is unforgivable in Florida. I'm sorry, whether I had been in Catwoman or not, I would have been dying and I'm not a whole lot of fun when I'm hot like that. So based on this experience, I don't know that I would go back to TBCC next year. Being that we don't really have all that many cons in Florida, let's face it, I'll probably find myself there, but not because this year was all that enjoyable. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I didn't want to make just a review. I really wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about my experience at Tampa Bay Comic Con. That's all from me. I've been Snarky J. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts and your experience at Tampa Bay Comic Con this year or in the past in the comments below.